Hello and welcome to my channel, Vice Rhino here. Today, it's a Christmas miracle. I just noticed that Lying Liar Who Lies, Matt Powell, released another one of his movies. This one's called The Atheist Religion, and he is advertising it as a sequel to Science Falsely So Called. Powell's stuff is always so fun because he's one of the few apologists that I am actually comfortable calling a liar, as there have been several instances of him dishonestly editing people and doing things like asking questions and pretending they never answered them when they did. Anyway, I'm going to try and keep my responses to about 15 to 20 minutes, so I'm not sure how many parts this series will be, but I'm expecting to have some fun with it, so let's go! Okay, so once again we have some DVD cover art. Churches always seem to be a bit behind on the times. Hovind was talking about tapes long after DVDs were the norm, and now Powell's here with his DVD art when digital downloads are the norm. And if you still want a disc, get a Blu-ray. It's better this time than it was last time, so let's go over it a little bit. If you're listening to this as a podcast, I'd encourage you to go to the original video and just watch the first eight seconds or so to see this image. It is absolutely fantastic. So we've got Richard Dawkins dressed as a Jedi with monkeys praying to him, a TIE fighter flying overhead, and a T-Rex roaring behind him, all taking place in front of a public school. Well, except for Dawkins, that seems like a pretty kick-ass religion. Now, looking at the back, I don't want to take too much credit for this, but I do know for a fact that Matt has seen at least a couple of my videos, and for Science Falsely So Called, I may have had a bit of fun at Matt's expense for having the word color down at the bottom in a childish looking font on his cover art, and it's not there on this one. So I think he may have watched my series on him and adjusted something when he received criticism for it. Let's see if he made any adjustments that are more than just superficial. Not one Christian ever has produced evidence. He didn't either, nor can you. No one can. It doesn't exist. That's not the I debate demand tonight. that anybody, anybody in this room who calls yourself a Christian, if you think you have scientific evidence to indicate you're God, bring it. You ain't got it. I win. I love Aaron. He's this big, scary looking dude who's actually really nice. But yeah, he often uses language that expresses more certainty than I'm comfortable with, which works well for him. But I would agree with this statement. There is no scientific evidence for the Christian God. 46% of Americans believe in the creationist view. God created humans in the present form at one time in the last 10,000 years. Does that just shock you that so many people still think that? Yes, it does. Shock you? It doesn't shock me, but it's pretty troubling. It's Jordy and Bill Nye! Yay! In 2007, World Net Daily published an article stating, Atheists are making a concerted effort to win the youth of America and the world. Ha! Starting strong. An article from 13 years ago, written by Chuck Norris, the well-respected political comment- Oh, wait. I mean, Chuck Norris, the guy known for his roundhouse kicks, which is titled, How to Outlaw Christianity. And I legitimately laughed when I read through the article and got to the sentence, Richard Dawkins is on a personal campaign and militant quest to spread his name, books, and atheism all over the internet by hoping young people will post his graphics on their MySpace page. I mean, come on, get with the times. Who doesn't use an Oxford comma, even back in 2007? But I mean, this is Chuck Norris after all. Legend has it that the Oxford comma uses him to indicate a small break. And then he broke the Oxford comma, and here we are. Hundreds of websites and blogs on the internet seek to convince and convert adolescents, endeavoring to remove any residue of theism from their minds and hearts by packaging atheism as the choice of a new generation. I mean, most of the atheist content that I have seen is usually not so much about wiping out any trace of theism from people's minds, but rather just encouraging people to question their beliefs and to try and make sure you have a sound epistemology. If having a sound epistemology and asking perfectly reasonable questions about your beliefs is that threatening to you, then that says more about your beliefs than it does about atheism. And I say to the grown-ups, if you want to deny evolution and live in your world that's completely inconsistent with everything we observe in the universe, that's fine. See? He just said it's fine for you to live in your own little fantasy land that denies evidence. But don't make your kids do it, because we need them. Yep. 
It is important to give kids a proper education or they end up like you, Matt, someone who doesn't understand why quote mining is a problem. Well, I don't see anything wrong with quote mining. And thinks that the sun burns differently because of the air in space. But in space, wouldn't it be a different scenario based on the fact that, you know, that the, the, the space and the air in the space is much different than the air we have here. And despite these glaring deficiencies in your understanding, you still felt confident enough in your wrong beliefs to put out a sort of documentary about why all mainstream scientists are wrong about nearly everything. The idea of deep time of this of billions of years explains so much of the world around us. If you try to ignore that, your, your world view just becomes, your world just becomes fantastically complicated when you don't believe in evolution. Yup, it does. Any one area of science that creationists have to deny in order to make their worldview make sense might be sort of plausible if you look at it just right. But when you take it all together as a whole, it is entirely internally inconsistent. Creationists will cry to the mountaintops about how we can't know for sure if radiometric decay rates are actually constant, despite never having seen any of them change over the past 115 years. Meanwhile, they will call things like the recession rate of the moon constants when they demonstrably change. Charles Darwin, who everybody just seems to be a fan of in 2020, said, and I quote, Often a cold shudder has run through me, and I have asked myself whether I have devoted my life to a fantasy. Yep, he sure did write that. Darwin was a very humble man, and often made statements like that when discussing evolution with people who disagreed with him. He would explain how reasonable their position was, how well he understood why they would object to his theory, and then go on to very politely explain why he disagreed with them. This particular quote is from a letter to Charles Lyell, the geologist, who originally opposed evolution. This was him congratulating Lyell on being willing to change his mind when presented with new information, and reassuring Lyell that his change of mind has reinforced his confidence in his own theory, since such an accomplished man as Lyell found the evidence convincing. Here, let's read the very next sentence that comes right after that one. Now I look at it as morally impossible that investigators of truth like you and Hooker can be wholly wrong, and therefore I feel that I may rest in peace. Do you really think it's logical and rational to take a sticker with that man's name and put it on the back of your car and be proud to represent a man who thought he was living in fantasy land? Well, as mentioned, he didn't actually think that. That was his statement explaining how good it made him feel that others found his evidence compelling as well, because that reassured him that he was not, in fact, living in fantasy land. As to the stickers on the backs of cars, I don't have any on mine, and I've never liked bumper stickers regardless of their topics. I find the Darwin bumper stickers to be just as silly as the Jesus ones. And yeah, let's go back to Columbine in... Colorado. Oh, come on, Matt. I don't know why, but I expected better of you. You opened your last video with Columbine, and here you are opening the sequel with the exact same thing. Though, granted, there haven't been any Hitler quotes yet, so maybe you'll take a slightly different angle? But could you at least pretend to have new material? The Columbine shooters wrote before they died that what they did in killing their fellow students and teachers they did it because they were taught evolution at the Columbine High School. Well, that's interesting. I found the transcriptions of their journals and searched through them for evolution and Darwin. Neither journal contained a single mention of either. They did both mention developed in their journals, one to say that he thought all of human civilization should be wiped out, using it in the same way that we might refer to developed or developing nations. The other used it in a way that is easier to look at as potentially a product of evolution, but he always surrounds it with flowery religious language, talking about God and the eternal struggle of good versus evil, or saying that he hopes that after he dies he will find peace. So, if you want to take this as evidence that being taught evolution in school led to what they did, then I can take it as equally, and realistically probably stronger, evidence that he believed in God, therefore having a belief in God leads to school shootings. But Grady here is speaking as though they laid it out plain as day, as though they wrote somewhere, because Mrs. Smith taught me evolution, I decided that killing them all was the only option. But that is simply not the case. They decided that their fellow students and teachers were inferior, and therefore they had a right to blow them away. 
One of the two of them decided that he was superior to them without reference to evolution. The other just wanted to burn it all down and thought all of humanity should be wiped out, again with no reference to evolution. This is the consequences of evolution. They should have a name for it when you argue based entirely on what you think the consequences of something being true would be, rather than basing your argument on what actually is true. It's an argument using consequences. So maybe an argument from consequences. Nah, that's too obvious. Now, there are times when arguments from consequences are appropriate, but that's usually when doing things like making moral or ethical choices or in politics when setting policy not when discussing whether or not a scientifically supported hypothesis or theory is true. Richard Dawkins recently said that religion poisons the mind. Yeah, it definitely can have that effect. And I think the Young Earth Creationist movement is an excellent example of that effect. No matter how well supported evolution and old ages for the Earth are scientifically, because of the predetermined belief that the Bible has to be literal and that the Earth has to be less than 10,000 years old, they cannot even begin to consider the possibility that they might be wrong, leading to the unwarranted overconfidence that has the effect of making people like Matt here feel like they have enough information to make multiple documentaries on subjects that they are entirely and obviously clueless about. Really, is that why 97% of school shootings are carried out by atheists? What is your source for that number? I feel like you just pulled it out of your ass, especially considering the fact that you can't even keep it straight. Well, it's amazing to me. Is that why 99% of school shootings are done by atheists? So which is it, 97% or 99%? But let's ignore that. When looking into it, I find that it is way more complicated than just what religion the shooter professed. For instance, shooters often express feelings of loneliness and of not belonging. If you are growing up in a Christian culture as an atheist and everyone around you is trying to pressure you to believe the same way they do or else you'll burn in hell for all eternity, do you think that might be a contributing factor to the feeling of loneliness? Do you think running around equating everyone who doesn't believe in your god with school shooters will make these feelings of loneliness go away? No, Matt. You are part of the problem here. Yet Christians have their minds poisoned according to you, yet Christians have never committed such an act. So we're just going to pretend that abortion clinic bombings aren't a thing, or at least weren't motivated by religious belief? Going to pretend that things like the Christchurch mosque shooting never happened? Here's the thing, Matt. When I see a shooting happen, I realize that there is more at play here than just religious belief or lack thereof. Certainly they can and do play a role, but usually it's more that the shooters are radicalized and socially isolated. My main point here is that both Christians and atheists have carried out radical violence, so if you want to use that as an argument against atheism, then it works just as well against Christianity. If not better, because the Christian terrorists actually explicitly give religious reasons for their actions. Why would you say that Christians have their minds poisoned, yet atheists lead the world in suicide, school shootings, alcohol abuse, and drug abuse? And you want me to believe that religion is what poisons the mind. Matt, come on. Put at least a little bit of effort into remaining internally consistent. You have titled this video, The Atheist Religion. That suggests that you are trying to convince us that atheism is a religion. But you can't even manage to keep that idea consistent with everything else that you say. So, does religion poison the mind, or does atheism? The fact that you are even asking that question betrays the fact that you don't actually believe that atheism is a religion, or it would be a nonsensical question. Now, to address your claims, the suicide one is wrong, clinical depression is a stronger risk factor for suicide attempts than religion, and it looks as though having a religious affiliation increases the risk. We've already talked about school shootings, now how about drugs? Well, studies have shown that a religious and strict upbringing do not affect a child's likelihood of partaking in drugs or alcohol as teenagers, and as far as recovery goes, it's a mixed bag. Some studies find that there is no link, some find a negative link, and some find a positive link. Notably, a lot of the ones that found a positive link did so by asking people who went through AA's 12 steps whether or not they had a spiritual awakening while they were recovering. Not only is spiritual awakening very poorly defined, but the 12th step of AA is to have a spiritual awakening. Seems to me that would skew the results a bit. 
So there is no evidence to support what you're saying here. And it's possible that religion also has a negative impact, though it does bear mentioning that there were other studies that found a positive impact on religion and recovery, but they didn't so much focus on the subject's beliefs, rather focusing on how often they attend religious services, which suggests to me that having a supportive community is the main factor in helping that person recover, especially since the effect is independent of which religious affiliation you have. You'd think if it were God protecting his people from falling into temptation, then the churches that don't believe in the same God as you would have similar rates as those dirty, dirty atheists. Well, shit. Here I thought this might have been a departure from your last video style and would actually just, you know, get to the point. I guess I should have been tipped off that this wouldn't be you doing any quality work by the six minutes of opening credits that this thing has when there's only about ten seconds of credits worth of names. And the biggest problem that I've noticed with atheists is that they don't really come asking questions. They're not curious people. They're actually anti-creation. Okay, but can we just talk for a moment about how you just called Raw Matt, a guy who at one point has been a breatharian, a creation scientist in your title card? Like, I can't even find out what scientific degree this guy is claiming, but his doctorate is apparently in divinity, which is definitely not a science. But no matter the qualifications, if you have to stoop low enough to be calling a guy who thought it was possible for the human body to be fully sustained off of nothing but breathing air a scientist, then that does not bode well for the quality of your arguments. But just to address what he said there, I came to atheism from a place of curiosity. I was a Christian, and I wanted to learn more about God and the Bible. What's more, I was a creationist, and thought for sure that God created the earth and life on it pretty much as it is. But this curiosity is what led me away from religion. And I know this is anecdotal, but it's a pattern that I see. People become atheists when they become curious and want to know more about their religion, and then find the answers to be insufficient. Who is it that says we don't need to research the origin of the universe because they have a book that already gives you the answer of magic? The non-creationists are curious about what caused the Big Bang and how the Big Bang even works. The creationists insist that there was no Big Bang because this book said so. And please note, I am specifying creationist here because I recognize that it is not a dichotomy between creationism and atheism. There are plenty of Big Bang affirming Christians out there. I mean, it was a priest that first proposed the Big Bang. If we were just anti-religion, we'd reject the Big Bang because it came from a religious guy. But if you bring evidence to the table, then we listen. If they didn't believe it, they wouldn't care. They would literally be off living their own life, doing what they enjoy. But the fact that they're so triggered by it means that they know it's true and it aggravates them. It penetrates deep. Truth always does. Truth hurts. Um, phrasing? So atheism is a religion because atheists are all secretly young earth creationists, but they don't like that they are young earth creationists. That's the line of reasoning here? Come on, do better. I skipped it, but they literally just played a clip of a guy supporting Obama because Obama would not push for young earth creationism to be taught in classrooms. If you can't figure out why we actively counter creationist nonsense from that clip, then I don't know if I can help you, but I'll give it a go. You see, we live in this thing called a society. In a society, your actions will have an effect on other people's lives. So when you take actions that will demonstrably harm other people based on incorrect beliefs, such as teaching children the anti-science of creationism in the science classroom, then we don't like that. So we push to make sure that the harmful actions you want to take are not allowed. Or we push to help reverse the indoctrination process for people so that they can take better actions in the future. This isn't really that hard. Okay, this looks like a good spot to leave it for now. They're about to do a pretty big topic shift with no apparent reason, so I'll end it there. Today's comment of the day comes to us from Caden Nunn, who says, You guys are such hypocrites. You say there is no evidence in the video, and then don't provide any evidence of your own. It's comical. This was on one of my videos on Jesus' resurrection, so let me explain the concept of the burden of proof. If I come up to you and say that my great-great-grandfather died, was buried, and then came back to life three days later, you would likely not believe me. In that scenario, you are not in a position where you need to provide evidence for your non-belief. Until I show evidence supporting my claim, the position of not accepting the claim is the default. If, however, I do provide evidence of my claim, and you find this evidence insufficient to warrant a belief in the event, then you still don't need to provide evidence against the claim of my great-great-grandfather's resurrection. At most, you just need to explain why you find my evidence to be unconvincing. 
Thanks for watching. Special thanks as always to my patrons, Lynn Dobbs, Mark McManus, What Jesus, and all the rest, who are the atheism that is totally definitely a religion which poisons the mind that is my channel. If you'd like your absence to cause all of society's problems while simultaneously not being absent, you can join us on Patreon for as little as a dollar per week over at patreon.com slash vice rhino. If you feel so inclined, you can also support the channel through direct donation or my Amazon wish list, which are linked in the description. If you'd like to listen to my videos in podcast form, the link for that is also in the description, as well as links to my social media accounts and my P.O. Box address. See you next time! <laughs>